Hi, this is Roger from Kanka Labs, and today it's about these uh, so-called spiderweb coils used for AM radio reception. In this case, you can see my two own pieces. One is for medium wave, one is for long wave reception. And you might have seen um, one of them in one of our other videos or perhaps in our shop. And you uh, might have asked yourself, well, what's so special about these uh, spider web antennas? Why don't we use just such a much smaller and easier to get ferrite rod or loop stick antenna? Well, there are some advantages uh, of these uh, spider web antennas, which make them uh, somewhat better than the loop stick antennas. So when it comes to radio reception, of course, one of the most important things is to get as much energy and, and reception voltage uh, into your reception coil. Now, how do you do that? First of all, what's very important is to get an, a, a, a cross-sectional area that is as large as possible. And you already can see these are uh, around six or seven centimeters in diameter at the middle of the coil. Uh, so they are already much, um, have a much bigger surface area than uh, the uh, much smaller uh, cross-sectional area of the loop stick antenna. But that is a little deceiving because um, the ferrite rod it really sucks the external field lines from the, uh, from the radio wave into the rod. So the effective cross-sectional area of such a small coil, which is on a ferrite rod, is in, in reality, it has to be multiplied with the effective UR factor. That's the relative permeability. So um, this can be around uh, 50 or 100, which means in reality, the cross-sectional area of this little uh, coil for a loop stick antenna can be 50 or 100 times greater than it looks like, just because of the properties of the ferrite material. So um, what could be still better than a concerning a as large as possible cross-sectional area is only a big frame antenna or you build outside a big multi-turn or one-turn loop antenna with dozens of meters of diameter but that's of course not uh, practical for most of us so except for a frame antenna which can also be used in-house, the uh, second best thing to getting a large cross-sectional area for getting as much energy as possible into the coil is either a as large as possible loop stick antenna or this spiderweb antenna. Now, if that would be the only point, then there would be no big difference between here the cheaper and easier to get loop stick antenna, but uh, there are still three things that determine uh, how large your reception voltage is. And um, then come, there comes into play the Q factor of your antenna. And that's the second most important thing to get an as high as possible Q factor for your coil because the coil factor at the point or at the frequency of resonance, it naturally amplifies the input voltage. So let's, let's suppose you have an input voltage of only 10 microvolts and you now have a Q factor of 100. You get at the output, in fact, 100 times 10 microvolts, uh, which gives you 1000 microvolts or 1 millivolts. So, of course, it's desirable to get uh, Q factors as large as possible, but to get them that, that high, you have to uh, take care of three things. The ohmic resistance must be as low as possible. Well, for that would be, uh, it would be sufficient to use a thick copper wire, a single strand copper wire, 
But then the second uh, effect comes into play, and uh, that is the skin effect. Um, I will explain uh, skin effect and the next effect, the proximity effect, in more detail in a separate video. Let's suppose to say that to counteract the effect of the skin effect is just to use Litz wire with as many uh, single strands um, of Litz wire as possible. And you can see as well the, here the uh, reception coil on the ferrite rod antenna is obviously also made of um, Litz wire. But here we use much thicker Litz wire which, with much more single strands which give you a lower ohmic resistance at the reception frequency. And the third thing is uh, the so-called proximity effect. And that is very hard to get control of because uh, when you get a, a current, an alternating current, which we of course have in, in radio reception, um, flowing through a wire next to another wire, which is always the, the case in if you are dealing with coils. You always have turns which lie next to the other turns where the current flows through. Um, then uh, the, the uh, magnetic field generated by one turn pushes uh, the el electrons uh, away on the, on, the, on the next turn and so on and so on. And this again increases the effective ohmic resistance at higher frequencies. So how to get rid of this? Well, if you separate the single turns as large as possible, we, uh, then you can minimize the proximity effect. But that is not possible on a ferrite rod antenna. Here you have turn lying next to the next turn. So they, they are really touching uh, each other and that gives you a quite high proximity effect and that ruins your Q factor from medium wave onward and in short wave reception it's no longer possible to use uh, Litz wire on ferrite rods for reception because then the proximity effect at short wave frequency totally takes over and it really uh, ruins your Q factor. But here these uh, spider web coils, there they have an uneven or odd number of slits and um, perhaps you might see it the wire at each slit here, it goes from upwards to downwards, again upwards, and that way you can increase the effective distance from one turn to another because no two uh, turns that follow after each other, they don't lie exactly side by side, but they are separated because one turn is running upward, the, the next turn is running at the same place downward, just because it's an uneven number of slits we have. And there is still a... So th that way we minimize the proximity effect as much as possible as is with this kind of winding or uh, with this coil type. And uh, there is still another advantage is that here the windings don't lie next to each other, but one is on the upside, the next is on the downside, the next again is on the upside, etc. Um, the self-capacitance of this coil, which is caused by if, if you have one turn lying to next to uh, the next turn, uh, as, as in a ferrite rod directly touching, then each turn has a, a parasitic capacitance to the next turn and this adds up for, for all the turns of the coil and this gives you a, a parasitic capacitance. And this parasitic capacitance, well, it's not detrimental to the Q factor, but it limits the frequency range to which you can tune with a variable capacitor simply because you have a minimum capacitance for a tech circuit 
which is equal to the so-called self-capacitance, which is the inherent parasitic capacitance of the coil itself due to the turns lying next to each other and giving a capacitance from one turn to the next turn which add up. Now the worst you can do is again the ferrite rod where the turns are lying touching each other and this gives a relatively high self capacitance and here uh, this effect is minimized again by the fact that no turns which come after each other are lying next to each other. They are always separated by at least one turn because they change the way where they are on the upper side and where they are on the lower side of the plastic template where they are wound on. And the last advantage of these spiderweb coils is the material that they are wound on. As you might know, any material other than a vacuum, it gives you losses. For example, the ferrite material uh, used in a loop stick antenna, it gives you magnetic uh, losses. And even here, this uh, plastic gives you losses. And it's the same as with the losses in plastic film capacitors. They, they are very different depending on the material that is uh, used for, for uh, isolating the plates of a film uh, capacitor or the, the electrodes of, the, of a film capacitor. And you might know that, for example, Teflon or mica as a capacitor material is the best one. And next comes polypropylene or polystyrene. And then it goes down to other types of plastic. So polystyrene is known as um, a relatively good plastic material concerning the so-called dielectric losses and uh, of course would be air and it, it is in fact possible to wind reception coils <laughs> in air if you have a for example a wooden uh, template and which you lay uh, which you later can pull out uh, then you can make so-called uh, honeycomb coils there you, you wind the coil on a template i will uh, show you uh, some pictures of them in the background and then at the, when you're finished with winding your coil, in the end, then you pull out the, the uh, single rods of your template and you have a, a coil which holds together by itself and is completely wound in air. But again, the next best, best thing is winding the coil on a, on a plastic uh, template. And uh, here polystyrene is used as a plastic material as the best we could get hold of. But even this can be improved by using these, I hope you still can see it, by using as a template, again a polystyrene plastic template, but and this time there is only a kind of skeleton uh, left uh, so that the, the, um, the coil is seeing nearly no plastics, only here at, at, the, at the slits. It has a little plastic in its way. And uh, this gives even less dielectric losses than this coil, but it's, it's more, import, uh, more um, expensive, of course, just um, to to manufacture one like this. So that was it for a short explanation about why these strange looking spiderweb coils are just uh, one of the best reception coils for AM radio reception. And in another video, I will show you how to wind them because you don't get them uh, readily uh, wound. Uh, you have to wind them by yourself. We only sell the uh, plastic template and here the contacts 
but uh, we, we cannot wind them for you. You have to wind them by yourself. We also sell the Litz wire uh, in, in different uh, versions, but you have to wind them by yourself. And in the next video, I will then show you an example how to correctly wind these spiderweb coils. So that was it for a short introduction. Why to use spiderweb coils for high Q factor uh, AM radio circuits. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye from Roger. Bye from Kanka Labs.